Hello and welcome back to the Ghost Droid development series. Today I wanted to get a very simplistic save and load system set up that will be able to handle a dictionary of scores and names. Now this is going to be probably a very short video compared to what we usually do because setting up a save and load system is actually quite easy in Godot. Now that doesn't mean it's not important, it's extremely important to understand kind of how it works. So let's actually go and get that set up now. So it might be like, you might first want to go and set up a new node and stuff, but we're not even going to do that. We're going to come down into our file system, into our auto loads. We're going to create a new script. And this is going to be called the save data manager. Now let's go and open that up and remove all the functionality in here. Remember with auto loads, we need to go into project, project settings, auto load, new file, go find our uh, script, which should be under auto loads and save data manager, click add. And now it's an auto load. So the save manager or the save data manager will be in control of saving and loading our data. First thing that we always want to do with a save system is get a path defined. So there is a, if we go under project and we come down to the user data folder here, that will open up a path into the roaming file for where Godot actually stores the save files. It's predefined path, right? And this is the path that we're going to use. So there is a really easy method of setting this up. What we want to do is create a new constant. Uh, we're going to, in all caps, right, save underscore data underscore path. And it'll be off type string, and we are going to set that equal to a new string. Now, what we want to set it to is user colon forward slash forward slash, and then the name of our file. So the user colon slash slash is the important part here. This is the user directory. So let's go and give this a name of, uh, let's call it the high score list. And we'll use dot save afterwards, just to make sure that we know it's a save file. You could store this as a dot txt for dot text file. Uh, I'm just gonna use dot save. It's the same thing in pretty much most ways compared to a dot text. We'll be opening up in a text editor if we want to edit it and you know, it's just a thing that allows us to easily note it, like notice that it's a save file. So let's create a new function and it will be called save underscore new underscore score underscore list. And it's going to need to take in a parameter of save data and it will be of type dictionary. Now we're going to do a void return type because it won't need to return anything. And I'm going to write pass for now, so I can kind of give you a rough explanation of how I want this to go. So when we want to save our new score list, we're going to have the dictionary for all of our scores already ordered and ready to go, right? That's kind of how I want it. I want everything to do everything it needs to and then store. That way we have a predefined list or a preset list of scores that are, you know, sorted from highest number to lowest number, so they are actually stored correctly. So we're going to need to pass through a save data like type of dictionary, right? That's what we're going to need to pass through, which means we actually need to, you know, go and save it as a dictionary as well. So let's go and get it saved as a dictionary. The first thing I want to do here is write var new underscore save underscore file of type file access. Now it doesn't need to be of type file access. It could be of type file or it could just be empty. So to save some headache, we're just going to use var new save file. It doesn't even need a type. Now, here is a really quick thing that people get stuck on often with save files. It's actually relatively easy to get a file saving, but it's really hard to make it so it doesn't crash when you try to load that file, because sometimes it might not know the file doesn't exist or it does exist, but it's different data. It's kind of confusing. So the first thing we really want to do here is we want to do an if check. We want to go if file access and file access is how we access certain files. I can actually control left click on this and it says here provides methods for file reading and writing operations, which is what we want to do. So file access dot file exists. So I want to first check if the file exists. So if the file exists, what's the path we need to pass it through? Well, the save data path because that has the you know high score list dot save at the end of it as well so we want to have that save data path pass through we want to go if file exists is not equal to true or you could do is equal to false so if it doesn't exist 
we want to write a new file. So let's go new underscore save file. And we will set that equal to the file access dot open. So open is how we open a new file, right? We want to open the file and we want to do something for it. First, we need to specify what file we want to open. So let's specify the save data path as the file we want to open. And now we actually give it a flag of sorts, right? We tell it what we want it to do. Does it want to do read, read, write, or write, or write, read? We want to just do write. Now, this is kind of specific, right? If I click on this, if I control click on write, these are the mode flags. Read opens the file for read operations. The cursor is positioned at the beginning of the file. Write opens the file for write operations. The file, if the file is created, if it does not exist and truncated, if it does, then you get the read, write and write, read. So we want write for now. So if it does exist, do that. Now we're going to use an else statement here. Let me uh, create another new line here like so, get it separated. And the else statement is just going to go new save file. So this is basically saying if this file doesn't exist, I want to create a new file and write to it. Now the second one is going if it does exist, I want to go and set this equal to file access dot open save data path and I want to do read write. Okay, this is now being rude because I did there we go read write so let's go click on read write and look at why we're doing that opens the file for read write operations does not truncate the file the cursor is positioned at the beginning of the file so this will allow us to overwrite the file we can just use write in this instance but using read write allows us to do a few other things if we want to make some changes to it so we're going to have this else statement for that reason and now we do something really really simple this is the easiest thing we can do when it comes to saving we grab the new file so new save file dot and we want to use store underscore var now you'll notice that i didn't get any uh autocorrect for this and that is because of the typecasting if i go and set this as type file access and then i use dot store var we now get the actual function for store var so what variable do i want to store well i want to store the data variable so what does store var actually do? Let's go and control click on that and have a look. Store var stores any variant value in the file. Pretty much what I'm doing here is I'm storing a dictionary to a file, right? And it's going to save it as a dictionary. That's kind of exactly what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new ready function up here. I'm going to func underscore ready. I'm going to call save new score list. You know we need a dictionary to pass through so i'm going to very quickly create a var temp underscore dictionary the i cannot spell dictionary there we go dictionary of type dictionary you don't need to follow along this. this is just me kind of showing off how this works open up the dictionary it will do a score of 100 and a name of waffle uh, a score of 900 and a name of beans why not so we have waffles and beans. So now our save file, if we in our ready function here call the save new score list and pass through the temp dictionary, should read store var. Well, should read, uh, sorry, I should read the temp dictionary for 100 waffle and 900 beans. So I'm going to go to the user data folder again, pull this off screen so I can actually click this without it disappearing. I'm going to hit run. And it should do nothing right now, right? Nothing should have happened. But if I pull back over to the save file here, we now have this dot save file. So I can open this and you'll see that there is a bunch of UTF-8 encoded characters here and some other nonsense kind of going on. This isn't necessarily human readable entirely, but we do now have a save file. So just to make sure that, you know, this is working again, we'll hit play and we'll make sure that there are no crashes. There are no crashes. Let's go and add a new name to this. Actually, let's move the names around. Let's move beans up to the top here and waffle down to the middle. And we'll add one more after this and it will be a score of 878. And we will set this name of, and I will just do test. Now I'm going to hit play again. And you know, no crashes, it's always a good thing to feel or good thing to see. 
open that back up, open the file, and we now have the three names. But you'll know that we don't have the three uh, numbers, right? That is actually okay. The numbers are getting stored, or the keys, or the values, you know, the actual score is getting stored, it's just not in a human readable state. So that's the saving of our data handled. Let's go and uh, delete this in the ready function. Right now we're right past, we're going to need that ready function in a second. So let's go and create a new func. <coughs> I'm going to call this load underscore saved underscore data. It won't take any parameters, but it will return a type of dictionary. So let's create some new lines here so we have some space. First thing we want to do, of course, is create var file underscore to underscore load, which is, of course, file access. Now we want to go and do pretty much kind of the same check. I say kind of because we want to check, but we mostly just want to go if file access dot file exists. And we want to pass through that save data file or save data path. And we want to go is equal to false. So if it doesn't exist, we just want to return because at that point there is no data to load. Of course, this is now going to go, you know, we need to return a dictionary, right? So we're going to go and create a new var of type uh, empty underscore dict of type dictionary. Set that equal to an empty dictionary, not an empty array, an empty dictionary. And we are going to now return the empty dict. So when it does this, when we actually go to kind of loading this data correctly into our high scoreboard, there will be nothing to load, so it won't actually run anything, which is perfect for us. So we now have an empty dictionary returning. But if the file does exist, we want to grab the file to load, and then we want to set that equal to file access dot open, pass through the save data path, and we want to just use file access dot read. So now we just want to read the file that we originally wrote. So now I'm going to set a new variable here, and it's going to be called the loaded underscore data underscore dictionary, the of type dictionary, and this is going to be the late, uh, loaded save file, right? So all we have to do here is grab file to load, and you know, we've got store var, now we can do dot get underscore var. So it will get the uh, data inside of that dictionary or inside of that file that we just saved as its original variable, which is in this case a dictionary. And then we just return the loaded data dictionary. Now, if we want to go very, very uh, safe and make sure this works, we can go var or not var, we can go print. And we want to print that loaded dictionary out. So I'm going to hit control S and save. Uh, I'm going to come back up to ready. I'm going to pass through the load saved data function, hit play because it should work. And it did. And as you can see, it printed nothing out. So why did it print nothing out? Let's go and find out. Open the user data folder. Let's make sure, ah, there is no save file, which means I deleted the file, right? Which means it did the thing. It printed an empty dictionary. It did print something. Oh, sorry, no, it didn't print anything. It just printed the, uh, or just returned an empty dictionary from this line so it couldn't load anything else because there's no save file. So let's, uh, up the top here, let's go saved new score list and we'll pass through the save data or the temp dictionary that we have. Now I'm going to hit play. Now what should happen is we should save the new data, so the temp dictionary here, and then immediately after we should load it and print out the loaded dictionary. So let's go and try that out. And there we go. It worked. We printed out the new save dictionary here. If I go under project, open user data folder, there's our save list. As you can see, it's not completely human readable, but we do have all of our scores and our dictionary being printed out. So let's actually go a little bit further and really make sure this is working. Let's use an accessor. Let's access the value at 878. So that should be the key, 878 is the key for the value, which is in this case, test. So when I hit play, it should print out test. And there you go, it printed out test. So we now know that this dictionary is definitely working. So what we can do here is we can 
remove a lot of these random lines here. We can come up to the top, we can remove the ready function, and we can remove the temp dictionary. Now, that is, that's our save load function ready to go, right? And now because it's set up as an auto load, of course, we can call save and load from other program or other files, other scenes, right? But yeah, that, that's it. That's our save and load system. That is all I'm going to do for today. I really want to have this as its own separate thing so it can really sink in for you. So you can rewatch it as many times as you can and get straight to the point of saving and loading data. But yes, thank you for watching. Uh, in the next video, we will go and of course conquer the UI elements of this and actually get you know some name-based saving and some score saving and get those actually done and get all of our data being saved and loaded properly. Yes, uh, I will see you in the next video. I hope you're having a great day and a great game dev journey. Uh, yeah, bye.